In this video, we share 20 getting started tips for Affinity Designer for the iPad. The first thing that you'll want to do is become familiar with the interface of Affinity Designer. It's very similar to Affinity Photo. You have your tools on the left side here. You have your personas in the upper left-hand corner right here. And the personas provide you with different workspaces. For instance, vector editing and raster editing for the different types of things that you want to do. Uh, so you're going to switch between those personas and they will influence the type of tools that are displayed here on the left side. Now, when you select these tools, you'll find that you get unique contextual controls at the bottom for each tool. And these allow you even more fine grained control over the tools that you use on the canvas. On the right side, you have all of your studios. And here's where you'll find all the advanced functionality within Affinity Designer. So you have all of your layers. You can go in there and adjust those layers. Uh, you have your colors, etc. We'll talk more about all this here throughout this tutorial. But one thing that I definitely want to emphasize, take advantage of the little question mark at the bottom right hand corner because it helps you learn what everything does within the app. Now let's talk about something extremely basic, but definitely necessary. Moving around the canvas, you use a two finger drag like this to move around the canvas in designer. One thing that you'll quickly learn is that a lot of the functionality within Affinity Designer is gesture based, and that includes also zooming. Of course, you use pinch to zoom so you can zoom in and zoom out. But you can also use a swipe up or down gesture like this on the Navigator Studio to zoom in or zoom out on your canvas. Handy. Now, if you open up the Navigator Studio, you'll see a lot more options. You can double tap on the preview to zoom to fit and then double tap again to zoom back out. Now, let me show you how easy it is to select objects on the canvas in Affinity Designer. So first thing you want to do is in your toolbar, tap the Move tool and then simply tap on an item you wish to control and then just tap and drag like this. And if you want to select a different item, you simply tap on that other item like that. So I can tap the heart or the square, the star, the circle and move them around at my leisure. Now, what if you want to select multiple items? Well, you simply tap and drag like this and put the marquee completely around all the items you wish to select. Now, let me just reiterate with the default settings, you have to drag completely around all the items you wish to select in order for them to be selected. For instance, if you do something like this, you see where the triangle and the square isn't completely surrounded. It's only going to select the heart. You can change that in the settings, but that's how it is by default. All right. So now we're going to drag and select everything on this canvas, get it all there. And now we can drag those around simply by tapping and dragging. Now, another way to select multiple items is by using a touch modifier. So select your first item, tap and hold on the screen with another finger, and then tap each item you wish to add to the selection. Or you can deselect like that. So really, you're going to want to be familiar with both ways to select items within Affinity Designer. Now, if you don't have that much stuff on your canvas, you can just tap outside of an area to deselect, but sometimes that's not possible. So you have a whole bunch of stuff on screen. In that case, you simply tap the X to deselect whatever you have selected. So let's try it again. I'm going to use a touch modifier to select multiple items. And now I'll just tap the X to deselect. Now you can easily delete a selection in a similar way. So just select what you want to delete. You choose these two items and tap the trash can button to delete. Snapping is super handy in Affinity Designer for aligning objects precisely. So you wanted to align these two squares together. Now it might be a little difficult to align those two squares by hand. You can see the gray square, the dark gray square is a little bit higher than the light gray square. But if I enable snapping like this, then you can see those boundary lines that allow you to snap right into place to align perfectly with other content on screen, either vertically or horizontally. And it goes beyond just mere snapping to other objects. You can actually snap to areas on canvas, like the center of your canvas. You'll get these little guidelines like that. Now, one of the biggest things that you'll need to master is undo and redo, because you're going to obviously be doing that all the time. Thankfully, it's really easy. Undo is just a two finger tap like this. So you can just keep two finger tapping on your canvas to undo. And I can undo all those changes, those ridiculous changes that I just did there. Now, if I want to redo, guess what? 
three finger tap. So I can redo all those ridiculous changes just by three finger tapping on my canvas like that. Super simple, super easy. But you can also use the History Studio and swipe on that History Studio up or down to quickly navigate through all your redo or undo history. So to swipe up, undo history, swipe down, redo history. And I can take it a step further if I want to. I can open up the History Studio and then jump directly with just a single tap to specific points in history. So if I want to go back here, I can tap that. If I want to go back one further, I can tap that. And I can also use the slider at the bottom to quickly navigate through history like that. You can use the Layer Studio within Affinity Designer to quickly select or deselect layers. So just tap and open up the Layer Studio and to select a layer, just tap on it. And you can see it's selecting each individual object on that layer. But you can also swipe a layer to select multiple layers. So I can select one or more layers or deselect one or more layers just like that. But what if I want to select a range of layers? Well, select the first layer and then select the last layer of the desired range with a two finger tap. And there you go. So we know how to select multiple layers, but how do you group or ungroup multiple layers? Well, I'm going to show you right now. Just simply use a pinch gesture when you have more than one layer selected in your layer studio. So you can see all those fall underneath that group. If I select an item, it's going to select all of them because they're all part of that one group. So how do you ungroup layers? Well, I bet you already figured it out. You simply do a pinch out with the group selected like that in the layer studio. And now you can go back to selecting individual items. Now you can quickly duplicate items by using a two finger modifier. So two fingers on the screen and simply drag out from the item you wish to duplicate. Just like this, super simple, super easy. I really love the gestures in this app. There's also something called power duplicate, which you'll need to use the duplicate option in the edit menu to take advantage of. But basically what a power duplicate allows you to do is to create duplicate items that follow a recursive trajectory based on changes you make to that object. So you can see I rotated it and I also scaled it down. So the next time I duplicate this, it's going to follow that trajectory. Watch, you see that a little rotation, a little scale down. It's just going to keep repeating that. And you can no doubt see that that is very powerful. This can save designers a whole lot of time and effort. Transforming objects in Affinity Designer is very easy. You simply grab one of the nodes there and just drag to transform. You can change the, the width, the height of each of the angles, but you can also use touch modifiers like this to change the way you transform items on the canvas. So here you can see it's maintaining its aspect ratio with a single finger modifier. With the two finger modifier, uh, it allows you to have a flexible aspect ratio, but it will keep it on center. And with the three finger modifier, it keeps it on center and maintains the aspect ratio. So very handy in design. And of course you can use these modifiers with any sort of object on the canvas, a square, uh, an ellipsis, whatever the case may be, you can do it. Now you can rotate objects much the same. Just use the rotation handle. When you're close to an object, you can rotate faster, but it's going to be less precise. And when you move away from an object, it's slower, but more precise. You can also use a touch modifier like this and rotate on 15 degree increments. So you can kind of snap to every 15 degrees, which can be very handy for rotating your objects. You can also go into the transform studio and rotate from there or adjust width or height or whatever the case may be. You can really, really hone in on fine grain details there. So if you want to quickly adjust color intensity of a selected object, you simply tap and drag on the color studio like this without even opening it up. And you can quickly adjust the intensity of that color. Of course, you can open up the studio for more advanced color options. Now, if you want to quickly change the stroke size, select your object and do something similar. Just simply drag on the stroke studio like this to easily and quickly change the size of the stroke. Now you can also swap stroke and fill by opening up the color studio once your item is selected and simply perform a swipe like that. And that allows you to quickly swap between stroke and fill colors for your selected object. Now you can also disable stroke and fill with just another swipe. So open up the color studio and then just swipe up on the stroke or the fill 
and that will allow you to disable either. After using the text tool to put text on your canvas, you can use the text studio and swipe up on it or swipe down on it to adjust the font size similar to how you adjust the stroke size and find more advanced options in Text Studio. You can use the color picker tool to quickly assimilate colors on the canvas. So if I have the star selected and I open up the color picker tool and I tap and hold and drag on the heart, it's gonna pick up that red color for the star and change it automatically. Now I can do the same thing with the heart. I'll select that, open up the color picker, drag, and now change the color of the heart. One of the coolest things about vector illustration apps are Boolean operations. These allow you to take two or more objects on your canvas and use them to create new shapes. So for instance, if I select these two objects here and I choose a subtract Boolean operation, you see what happens there? It actually creates a new shape, subtracting the shape on top from the shape on the bottom. So now I have a brand new shape that I can work with and you can use these Boolean operations to really create some unique shapes and use them in your illustrations. Now I'm going to choose an add operation. You can see basically it combined those two shapes together. Now I have something like a snowman. And then again, you can go in there and adjust and transform that shape that you just created. So really you can see how powerful this can be. Okay, so let's do one more. I'm going to select both shapes again and then go up to edit and then choose the divide Boolean operation. And now you're going to see I have three shapes now because it divides it at each intersection. Now, the last thing I want to show you is quick export because I find it to be extremely handy, especially when you just want to quickly share something to a friend or to a colleague, you go up to the export option in the file menu, and then you can tap and hold one of these export options. You have lots of them, as you can see. Open up another app, and then just drop that right in that app so I can export a JPEG directly into the Mail app and quickly send my design to whoever needs it. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at 20 plus features for Affinity Designer. If you appreciate this video, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5 Mac.